Hey there, this is John Kelly, and you're watching The Music Enthusiast. Hey guys, it's Gracie from The Music Enthusiast, and today I'm here with John Kelly. How are you? I'm doing great. How about you? I'm doing great. I'm so excited to talk to you today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, getting right into the questions, what made you want to get into music? Uh, it's like a mix mix of a few factors. So um, I grew up listening to like a lot of classic rock, mainly from just like in the car with my mom. She would always be playing like Boston or Zeppelin or um, like ACDC and stuff like that. So I always just like would listen to that stuff. And then um, I also had like a little first stack acoustic guitar like in the corner of my room growing up. So I would always just pluck on that for like years. And then I remember in fourth grade, I was just like, I want to just like, I want to like take this seriously. So I started uh, looking up videos on like YouTube and um, just like learning songs. And then the rest is history. I got lessons for a little bit, but then um, I was very busy. So I didn't have time for that, but um, I just still played. So here we are now. Yeah, I mean, obviously you've been in music for a while. Do you have a favorite musical memory? I have a few, actually. So Let's hear them. Okay, so I remember um, basically a lot of them have to do with just like connecting with audiences or mosh pits or stuff like that. Um, I remember 2019, we played at our local um, like theater. It's called the Camel Theater. It's downtown Martinez, our hometown. And um, my band, the Out of Towners, was playing. And we played this, it was like maybe 10 seats from selling out. And there was a lot of, we had a lot of friends there. And um, we had all the kids like come down to like the front area because there, there's a lot of, there's like seats and rows and stuff like that. So everyone came down and like just watched us like in front of the stage. I remember the last song we played, I said, screw it. And I just like got everyone on stage and we started like jumping and moshing together. So that was really fun. Um, yeah, that's, that's probably like one that stands out to me because, um, I actually went to a music camp a few years back in the summer. It's called Soundwall and they hosted at UC Santa Cruz and, um, basically the same thing happened. So I was in this, I was in the crowd and, um, this, this, you know, band from the camp was playing because they, they would like form bands. And at the end of the week, we'd play, um, like one song at like this big concert it was amazing it was so much fun and the uh, one of the bands that played got everyone on stage to jump so that's kind of where i got it from so basically just vibing with the crowd or vibing with the band while the song's playing yeah i mean that's always fun mm -hmm. what has it kind of been like for you starting out in the music industry so basically uh, a lot of fun because we've just been doing the whole indie thing so my band, the Anna Towners, um, we pretty much do everything at our drummer's house. His name's Alex San Maria. Um, we, he has him and his brother, his twin brother, Joe, they uh, have all this equipment and stuff like that. Like uh, Joe like produces our music and he, um, he does like photography for us. So he's like a big role in our band. And basically uh, we, they have like all this recording equipment so basically we, we just uh, record and um, just post it on our own. And um, Joe, like I said, he does photography. So he also has, um, he has that like really nice camera. So he recorded a music video for us for our, our uh, original Fort Costa. So um, it's been a lot of fun doing that stuff, just like on our own, just like on our own, by our own means. It's just a lot of fun, you know? And then just like having all that creative freedom. It's been great. Yeah, I mean, is it better for you getting to work with friends than work independently? I love collaboration. I don't mind working by myself at all. I tend that some some of the best songs I've written have been by myself. Not to sound arrogant, but at the same time, I've also had some great songs with bands. So it just doesn't, it just, it's just like, you can't really like, um, you can't really pinpoint what works, but I, personally love collaboration a lot more. I love working with people, um, especially with music. Love it. Mm -hmm. I mean, we found you on TikTok. What was that like kind of posting for the first time? 
Um, so I was very against TikTok at first. I thought it was dumb. I was like, I'm not gonna hop on this trend, you know. And then quarantine hit, and I got bored. So I'm like, we'll see what it's we'll see what it's about. So I just I would just post some stupid videos, and then um, some blew up. I don't know what video you saw, but someone blew up, and I was just like, okay. So I like TikTok. It's fun. Yeah, what was that kind of like for you watching the TikTok blow up? So uh, the the very first one that blew up was just a stupid video that I took with one of my friends and it got like 25,000 and I was just like, no way, this is blowing up, (laughs) you know? And then um, there was like one, me and Alex playing Hawk for Teacher by Van Halen that got like 29,000 views. That one was really cool because it was like us actually playing and stuff like that. And then... um, there was one that blew up that got like 800k and it was me basically making fun of the song Yellow Let Better by Pearl Jam. Great song. Love Pearl Jam. Just, you know, the whole joke about you can't really understand what Eddie Vedder is saying in that song. Mm-hmm. Got, got 800k and then I made a video. <laughs> I don't even know how to explain it, but I got a million views the other day of uh, it was like a stitch. It was like, what's one song lyric that you can change? And it was, I was like, Let's do some funny stuff. So, uh, Deja Vu by Olivia Rodrigo. I have never listened to that song. Really? Prior. No. <laughs> so I was like, I looked up the lyrics. And I'm like, okay, here's the chorus. And I was like, okay, so I'm listening to this song. And, um, you know, this, this line, um, I forgot what I was, I forgot what I said, but I was like, oh, well it could be better. And then I sing say it ain't so by Weezer. So that got a million views. Um, Oh, yeah, and there was another Weezer one that blew up. Yeah, it's just like, yeah, I don't even know how to describe it. It's just funny. <laughs> I mean, talking more about you and your music, how do you tend to find inspiration for songs? That is a great question. It it varies. So it can, mainly the things I like to write about are like experiences or um, emotions from said experiences. So like, um, having a great time with some buddies, making some memories and or getting your heart broken, um, stuff like that, because that's where like, you really feel it, you know? And that's where the lyrics just come out. I'm not a huge lyric guy. I, when I like listen to songs, I listen to the instrumental aspect of it. Like for some reason, like my brain just works like that. Like I don't like, I have to like listen, manually listen to the lyrics sometimes for some songs. But um, when I do write lyrics, they usually, like, it's usually from something like that. Yeah. I mean, do you have any future projects that you could hint at or tell us about? Yeah, yeah sure. So um, let's see. So out of towners, we have, um, we have like a lot of originals. And so, uh, so maybe we'll do stuff with that. We'll see. Um, Alex and I have like a side project band called Happy Accident with uh, our our friend Jonathan Rico on the bass. So um, last summer, Alex and I wrote a song and we posted on SoundCloud and it turned out to be pretty good. Like, I mean, it didn't get like that many streams, but we weren't really intending for that to happen. And we dubbed the name, you know, we, we dubbed the group name Happy Accident. So we're like, let's just like get some good, get a guy or two and um, make that like a little side project, you know? So we're kind of working on that like slowly. Um, so yeah, just a lot of songwriting, hopefully soon. I love doing like music videos. That poor costume one was so fun. So if we can do some more of those, that'd be fun too. Mm-hmm. I mean, have you seen yourself and your music kind of grow from when you started to now? Yeah, I remember uh, I've always been in like bands. So um, I remember like fourth grade, uh, we were in this band and we're all, I'm from the Bay Area. So I'm a huge giant. I'm a huge you know, San Francisco Giants fan. And, you know, Pablo Sandoval, his nickname was uh, Panda. So we were called the Panda Men and we had these panda hats. And this is when the Giants were like winning, like uh, in their dynasty. So like we had these panda hats, we called Panda Men. So we, we I remember our first show, we played like Eye of the Tiger. And then like, uh, as like I got older, I started to have like, bigger set lists and started to write more originals and then like with the out-of-towners like I said like we 
got to the point where we started releasing our own music. We started recording and all that stuff. And then for me, I started, um, I started, you know, listening to a lot more like types of music, lots, like a lot more than just like, um, like the box, like Boston and Zeppelin and all of them. Like I started listening to a lot more uh, different eras of rock and even some like different genres. So um, I started to get more inspiration. And then uh, that's where like songwriting kind of evolved from there. Mm -hmm. If you could describe yourself and your music in two to three words, what do you think they would be? Good question. Let's call it psychedelic indie blues. Okay. Is like there a reason for that? Yeah, because um, like we have songs like Por Costa that are like more indie-ish. And then we have an unreleased song that we play live a lot called The Legend of John Doe, which is like a psychedelic surf song. And then like uh, I'm also like a huge blues guy. Like I love Stevie Ray Vaughan and um I love Eric Clapton, like Eric, like Eric Clapton, freaking amazing. Um, and Jimi Hendrix and all them. So that's where I like the psychedelic part too. It was like the 60s rock. Like I got my Beatles poster right here. Yeah. Um, so I guess in more individually, I'm a big psychedelic fan. Like I love like that 60s rock, like uh uh cream, Beatles, early Zeppelin, all that stuff. Um, super inspired super inspirational to me because like um it's super like it's like normal rock but it's like the whole aesthetic is amazing and then like as a guitarist it's like so fun because um you get to use your wah pedal a lot and like all these different pedals and like you just solo all the time and uh you make some cool noises with your guitar it's just like experimental it's fun yeah uh for the future do you have any dream collaborations you would want to have in a, in a in the perfect world, I would love to uh, have a jam sesh with like Eric Clapton or Jimmy Page, but um, I think it would be fun to have like a collaboration with like uh, hmm. there's this kid on TikTok, um, who's from like the East Coast, and his name is um, it's like Hap Gilmore or something, and he has like this incredible voice like he sounds like uh he has like that Robert Plant like vocal range and I would just love to uh like have a jam sesh with him I think that'd be cool and then also I think it'd be fun to have a like a collab with Greta Van Fleet because they're like a uh, they're like the new like um they're like the closest thing to like the uh most like the popular rock band because um there's not a lot of mainstream rock nowadays that like sounds like the old stuff and yeah. they're really like part they're like really starting to bring that back so I think it'd be fun to have a collab with them yeah I mean all of those would be great and you never know the big collabs could happen yeah, who knows <laughs> um my last question our website is all about up-and-coming artists do you have anyone that you would want to recommend to others Ooh, um let me think about this um up and coming artists i would say i would say that kid from tiktok i can send you his link i can see like his right. at because I, I forgot like the actual username but it's something like that um let's see what else um man i'm i'm blanking i really can't think of like a lot of people um That's okay i guess my drummer alexander maria too because that kid is so good at drums um i like i say this to him and like he's obviously like no no but like I, I he's like the closest thing like a like a prodigy because he told me like when he was like three five years old he would watch like these rush tapes and he would get these pillows and just try and copy Neil Pert and like you're three three five years old doing that that's like saying something and then like he's like nine years old playing with kids 18 19 years old with these groups and then I remember the first time I saw him play, I was just blown away. So check out Alex San Maria. <laughs> He's a yeah, definitely. We'll check out both drummer. of your recommendations. Yeah. Um, thank you for doing this interview. It was so nice to talk to you. Thank you for having me. This has been a pleasure. 